Jen Dobre, everybody. Good day. Good evening, I should say, because it's evening. It's Saturday evening, but you will see this video first next week. And when you see it, I'm going to be in the country of Poland, south of Sweden, on the other side of the Baltic Sea. And before I go to Poland, I thought, because I'm going to Poland, I give you a list of top 10 books and top 10 authors, both from Poland and about the country. So here are 10 books that you could read if you're interested as much in Poland as I am. Of course, we start with a Nobel literature winner, the last winner for Poland a couple of years ago, Olga Tokarczuk with her novel Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. She was born in 1962 and this book was published by Riverhead in 2019 and it's actually on my Kindle on my way with me to Poland. In a remote Polish village, Janina devotes the dark winter days to studying astrology, translating the poetry of William Blake and taking care of the summer homes of wealthy Warsaw residents. Her reputation as a crank and a recluse is amplified by her not-so-secret preference for the company of animals over humans. Then, a neighbor, Bigfoot, turns up dead. Soon other bodies are discovered in increasingly strange circumstances. As suspicions mount, Janina inserts herself into the investigation, certain that she knows who done it. If only anyone would pay her mind. A deeply satisfying thriller come fairy tale, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead is a provocative exploration of the murky borderland between sanity and madness, justice and tradition, autonomy and fate. Whom do we deem sane? It asks. Who is worthy of a voice from one of Poland's, not only Poland's, from one of Europe's, not only one of Europe's, but only from one of the world's great voices in literature right now? Olga Tokarczuk. And many years before Olga, another guy won the Nobel Prize for Poland or for himself, actually. Um, the second novel here is called The Issa Valley by Jezław Miłosz. He lived from 1911 to 2004 and he won the Nobel Prize in 1980. This is about Thomas, the child protagonist of the Issa Valley. He's subject to both the contradictions of nature in the severe northern setting and sometimes enchanting, sometimes brutal timbre of village life. There are deep pine and spruce forests, the grouse and the deer and the hunter's gun. There is Magdalena, the beautiful mistress of the village priests, whose suicide unleashes her ghost to haunt the parish. There are also the loving grandparents with whom Thomas lives, who provide a balance of the not quite Dostoevskian devils that visit the villagers. In the end, Thomas is severed from his childhood and the Issa River and leaves prepared for adventures beyond his valley. Poetic and richly imagined, the Issa Valley is a masterful work of fiction. The third book, the third author that I want to present here is an author who died also a couple of years ago, like Miłosz. Uh, he is an idol for everyone who is dealing with journalism with as a foreign correspondent. He was the foreign correspondent. And you see with this greatness of authors like Tokarczuk, like Miłosz, like Ryszard Kapuscinski, that Poland is such a great cultural country in Europe. And the book I want to recommend by Ryszard Kapuscinski is the one that struck me when I read it, when it came out published in 1998 by Granta Books, must have been published earlier. I think I read it in the mid of the 1990s. This is Imperium by Richard Kapuscinski. Soon after the Soviet Union fell, the Polish journalist and reporter Richard Kapuscinski who had written amazing books about Ethiopia, about Iran, uh, went to the Soviet Union, which was about to fall apart, and he traveled to a lot of places. He traveled to almost all of the republics. He traveled to Yakutia in the middle of Russia, where the temperatures are the coldest in the whole world. And he tells a lot of beautiful stories of everyday life, of meeting everyday people in this country, in this empire that is about to explode or implode, like it is now. It Im it imploded to 15 independent republics, and now it seems that we're not going to wait a couple of years until Russia is going to implode into another bunch of different countries. There's so many people living in Russia, so many different people, and there's so many different republics with um, folks like the Chuwash, the Yakutians, the um, 
Chechen Chechens, of course, the Ingushians, the Abkhazians, and so on and so on. If you want to understand more about this country, you can go back and read Richard Kapuscinski. The next book is another high, stellar novel again, and you see what, what incredible achievements Poland has in terms of literature. This is Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. Stanislaw Lem, who lived from 1921 to 2006. The book was published in 1961, and it is one of the stellar novels of science fiction literature worldwide. When Chris Calvin arrives at the planet Solaris to study the ocean that covers its surface, he finds a painful, hitherto unconscious memory embodied in the living physical likeness of a long dead lover. Others examining the planet, Calvin learns, are plagued with their own repressed and newly corporeal memories. The Solaris Ocean may be a massive brain that creates these incarnate memories, though its purpose in doing so is unknown, forcing the scientists to shift the focus of their quest and wonder if they can truly understand the universe without first understanding what lies within their hearts. Wow. Stanislav Lem Solaris. And number five is a cult novel, especially cult books among young people. He is from the city of Wuc. And I'm talking, of course, about The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski, born in 1948. This is about Gerald the Witcher, revered and hated. He's a man whose magic powers, enhanced by long training and a mysterious elixir, have made him a brilliant fighter and a merciless assassin. Yet he's no ordinary murderer. His targets are the multifarious monsters and vile fine fiends that ravage the land and attack the innocent. But not everything monstrous looking is evil, and not everything fair is good. And in every fairy tale, there's a grain of truth. With his novels about the witcher, Andrzej Sapkowski from Lodz, from Wuch, Poland, has established himself as a cult author who is read all across the world by a young generation. The computer game that started out from this novel sold incredibly. And there's a Netflix series, I think, already with three different seasons. Uh, it's a great success. And I, I read that story that Sapkowski actually, uh, when somebody wanted to buy the rights for g getting the rights to make a computer game, a PC game out of the Witcher novels, uh, he said, well, I'm not interested in that. Uh, you can have it for like 10,000 euros. And then they made millions and millions. And I know, don't know actually how that ended if Sapkowski got a little more than the 10,000 euros that were uh, promised to him in the beginning. The next book. We get come a little bit more modern now, from a little bit younger authors. This is a novel called The House with a Stained Glass Window by Zanna Sloniowska, born in 1979, translated by Antonia Lloyd-Jones. In 1989, Mariana, the beautiful star soprano at the Weave Opera, is shot dead in the street as she leads the Ukrainian citizens in their protest against Soviet power. Only 11 years old at the time, her daughter tells the story of their family before and after that critical moment, including 10 years later, her own passionate affair with an older married man. Just like their home city of Lviv, which stands at the crossroads of nations and cultures, the women in this family have had turbulent lives, scarred by war and political turmoil, but also by their own inability to show each other their feelings. Lyrically told, this is the story of a young girl's emotional, sexual, artistic and political awakening as she matures under the influence of her relatives, her mother's former lover, her city and its fortunes. This city, Lviv, was called Lemberg in, um, when it belonged to Poland, then it was given to the Ukraine after the Second World War, if I remember it right. And now Lviv is one of the most Western outposts in Ukraine. And uh, many people have fled to Lviv from other parts. But, but even although it's very much Western, very far away from the front, the Russian soldiers are still bombarding and um, shooting missiles at it some, from time to time. Number seven is a novel by 1974-born uh, author Violetta Gregg. This is Swallowing Mercury, trans Swallowing Mercury, translated by Ilya Maroniak. Viola lives in a close-knit agricultural community. Viola has a black cat called Blackie. Viola's father was a deserter, but now he's a taxidermist. Viola's mother tells her that killing spiders brings on storms. Viola must never enter the seamstress's secret room. Viola collects matchbox labels. Viola is a good Catholic girl brought up with fables and nurtured on superstition. 
Viola lives in a Poland that is both very recent and lost in time. Swallowing Mercury is about the ordinary passing of years filled with extraordinary days. In vivid prose filled with texture, color and sound, it describes the adult world encroaching on the child's. From childhood to adolescence, Viola dances to the strange music of her own imagination. Number nine, and this is not translated from the Polish, this is translated from the Hebrew. Poland, a Greenland by Aaron Appelfeld, translated by Stuart Schaffman, published by Schocken on June 20 in 2023. Very um, timely, a very actual book from, from one of these days. Tel Aviv shopkeeper visits his parents Polish birthplace in an attempt to come to terms with their complex legacy and is completely unprepared for what he finds there. Jakob Fein's practical wife and daughters are baffled by his decision to leave his flourishing dress shop for a 10-day trip to his family's ancestral village in Poland. Struggling to emerge from a midlife depression, Jakob is drawn to Zidowsze, intrigued by the stories he'd heard as a child from his parents and their friends who would wax nostalgic about their pastoral verdant hometown in the decades before 1939. The horrific years that followed were relegated to the nightmares that shattered sleep and were not discussed during waking hours. When he arrives in Krakow, Yakov enjoys the charming sidewalk cafes and relaxed European atmosphere so different from the hurly-burly of Tel Aviv. And his landlady in Zidovce, beautiful sensual Magda, with a tragic past of her own, enchants him with her recollections of his family. But when Yakov attempts to purchase from the townspeople the desecrated tombstones that had been stolen from Zidovce's plowed under Jewish cemetery, a very different Poland, emerges, one that shatters Yakov's idyllic view of the town and its people and casts into sharp relief the tragic reality of Jewish life in Poland, past, present, and future. In this novel of revelation and reconciliation, Aaron Appelfeld once again minds lived experience to create fiction of powerful, universal resonance. Another great, one of the greatest Polish authors is number nine here in this list. The novel is called Ferdy Dirk by Witold Gambrowicz, translated from the Polish by Danuta Borchert. In this bitterly funny novel by the renowned Polish author Witold Gombrowicz, I said so, a writer finds himself tossed into a chaotic world of schoolboys by a diabolical professor who wishes to reduce him to childishness. Originally published in Poland in 1937, Ferdy Dirk became an instant literary sensation and catapulted the young author to fame. Deemed scandalous and subversive by Nazis, Stalinists and the Polish communist regime in turn, the novel, as well as all of Gombrowicz's other works, was officially banned in Poland for decades. It has nonetheless remained one of the most influential works of 20th century European literature. Ferdy Dirk is translated here directly from the Polish for the first time. Danuta Borchert deftly captures Gombrowicz's playful and idiosyncratic style, and she allows English speakers to experience fully the masterpiece of a writer whom Milan Kundera describes as one of the great novelists of our century. Witold Gombrowicz wrote three other novels, Transatlantic, Pornographia and Cosmos, which together with his plays and his three-volume diary have been translated into more than 30 languages. The last and final novel is by the great young, still young Polish author Dorota Maslowska, Maslowska. And this, she lives in Warsaw. She was born in the beginning of the 1980s. And she was a literary sensation. In the beginning of the 2000, I think in 2002, she wrote and published her novel, Snow White and Russian Red, Dorota Maslowska. And she has published six or seven or eight novels already. Most of them are actually translated into German, but unfortunately only two, three of her novels are translated into English. So I took Honey, I Killed the Cats here by Dorota Maslowska, translated by Benjamin Palov in 2012 as the number 10 in my top 10 books from Poland. An incomparably hilarious satire of modern customer culture with everything from personality to religion commodified. Like Virginie Despont meets Blade Runner, the latest novel from Poland's literary enfant terrible takes place with the American pop imaginarium weaving an urban tale of two independent young women through the author's signature lexicon of street slang and mass media driven lingo. The bond between the two friends is rattled when one, Joe slash Joanna, leaves the single life at the behest of a new boyfriend. Far slash Farah finds refuge in a new friendship with Go, Goja or Margaret. 
an eccentric hipster with a, knack, with a knack for getting her way. The impetus of the action resides in the language, rather than any particular plot twists. There are several dimensions at work within the book, poking at intergenerational issues, subcultures, the media, celebrity culture, and pseudo-intellectualism on a global scale. Maslowska's book is an astitude observation of the superficiality of a society driven by marketing and commerce. The portrait of the modern world painted by Dorota Maslowska isn't a flattering one. It is a world full of shrieks and yells, guffaws and snickers, broken heels and beer bottles, popping champagne corks, cocaine sniffed off of toilets, and the rubbery snap of condoms. The hectic, chaotic freedoms of the weekend are considered a just reward for the toil of the work week even if it leads to making a total idiot of oneself, enduring bodily harm and falling asleep with one's head in the toilet. The observation of her generation's feeble attempts at living a full life with the candle appropriately burning at both ends in such a sincere manner gives an honest glimpse of the real-life nature of popular culture beyond the shiny pages of lifestyle magazines. Dorota Mazowska, she has become one of the great young voices in Polish literature. And that completes a top 10 list from Poland, where I am now when you see this video. If where are you traveling this summer? If you are traveling somewhere, and if you are a fellow booktuber, why don't you make a video of 10 books from Italy, from Spain, from Portugal, from Malaysia, from Uruguay, from China, from what, wherever you go? This could be interesting. This We could all put this together into reading. Whenever I travel to a new country, I want to read uh, a book, at least one book of them. And there were so many interesting books that when I did the research about Poland that I wanted to read. So I see you soon. So what I say today is in Polish, do zemia. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye bye. Hey da. Hasta la vista.